is a sweet. Jeff, what are your thoughts? So you've only, you've only had this for a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. I was up last week and took a look at it for the first time. But this is, I mean, this is awesome. Because yeah. I've been an LV1 user for a long time. Yeah. But the fact that it is in a console enclosure, mm-hmm. like a traditional classic <laughs> mixing console yeah. would be, this to me takes LV1 to a whole new level. Yeah. I think, um, you know, for people who are familiar with LV1, it's like, oh, this is this is LV1, right? The software is functioning the same way. You know, touchscreen, obviously, you know, channel view, all the things that we love about these tabs at the top, that's not changed. Yeah. But you're not having to Frankenstein together a bunch of different components and hope it works, right? I think that's been some people's yeah, I think for resistance me, to LV1. In yeah, the past. I think it's a perception thing. You know, this is finally taking all the things that LV1 does really, really well. Yep and putting it in a form factor where it removes the barriers to people having to figure out how to build a system. What components do I need to yep. have a, a qualified LV1 system? If I accidentally buy the wrong switch, I'm totally out of the out of commission. Exactly. Whereas here, it's all just kind of built in. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and how much money did you spend on your first LV1 rig? It was about 10 grand. Yeah. yeah. And this is coming in at 8K? 8K. $8,000 yeah. for the functionality in this desk? And what's built in for IO is the Ionic yeah. interface, which yeah. is, you know, 32 bit pre's, 16 in, 12 out, AES, incredible fidelity. I mean, it sounds awesome. It's like the, just the IO itself mm-hmm. to me is better than consoles in a similar price yeah. point can even offer. Yeah. Plus you got the flexibility of waves processing mm-hmm. on every channel. Every channel can be mono or stereo. So yeah. this is a 64 channel console. Yeah. But you can have mono or stereo inputs. Yes, yeah, so so up to 128. Up to 128 inputs on 64 stereo channels. Yeah. Now you're not gonna have that because nobody has all stereo channels. Yeah. yeah. But to think of a band with, you know, 72 to 90 inputs being able to do what they need to do on this form yeah. factor is awesome. Yeah, and it's it's still expandable too. So the, the out of the box form factor, you've got the 16 by 12 IO. You've got uh, the 16 plus one faders, uh, and you've got the equivalent of like a, a new extreme server as far as DSP. Yeah. But you can still expand it in the same way that you would a classic LV1 system, or sorry, <laughs> you can still expand it in the way that you would a modular LV1 system, yeah. where you can add an additional server if you want more DSP. Right. If you want more faders, you can get the standalone fit controller. You can add another screen to it. Yeah. For IO, you just add more stage boxes. Yeah, we because have, like the LV1 software of old, that part stays the same. It still supports 16 yep. IO units. And so if you need, you know, obviously this is, you see the classic here because that's what's built in. You have the 16 by 12, but then you could add other stage boxes, you know, the DS Pro. Yep, so the DS Pro would have 40 inputs. 32 channels, yeah. the, the Ionic standalone 16 by 12, there's an Ionic 24 by 18. Um, if you need to integrate Maddie or Dante or even another console format, all those sound grid compatible devices still um, can be added to the system. Yeah, that's great. Do you see there being the same stability, greater stability? I mean, how do you see that comparison to the modular platform? I mean, I think- Can I just interrupt? Yeah. Anytime I've seen instability, yeah. it's because of operator error 90% of the time. Yeah. And so I think this takes that out of the equation so much oh. that you know, I, I don't know if you would say this is more stable, but I think it's as stable as a well-run LV1 system historically could be. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think LV1 as a software platform is extremely stable. Yeah. To your point, most of the times there's any issues with an LV1 system, it comes from those third-party components that aren't qualified to be used with your system. Bad switch or a, an unsupported switch or bad yeah. cables bad patch cables between your switch and your host computer and stuff like that. So this takes out all those variables yeah. um, and just puts it in a, a fully qualified uh, unit that is ready to go on tour, ready to go on an install. Um, I think it's gonna be suited to meet the challenges and demands of pretty much any environment. Yeah. Well, I think for the church, you know, to have this form factor, to have the sound quality and fidelity, to have the flexibility that all the plug-in options can afford you. I mean, I just think it's it's a perfect solution in so many ways. Speaking of plugins, though, LV1 used to only come with three plugins: yep. the Emo, the Emotion filter, Parametric EQ, and Dynamics Channel. Yep. 
Waves has added a few more plugins to the default list. So now we have F6, mm -hmm. Waves Tune, yep. Renaissance Reverb, and H Delay as part of the default out of yeah. the box, don't need an additional license plugin package, which I think is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, Waves Tune alone, I think is yeah. what drives a lot of people towards an, a concept of using plugins for live production. Yeah. Um, and the fact that this is gonna be uh, stock available with this. Yeah, it's um, cool. Another thing to point out that's, that's new um, as part of this is the immersive monitor mixing. So you now have a 360 panner available on all your monitor mixes for every input. Huh. Wow. Can we That's show that real quick? Too. Yeah, sure. Because I love this aspect. You'll now see the 360 panner for each input in that mix. That's pretty sweet. That's, That's cool. pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, in the way some of the other options in that category work, like just to have more clarity from what you need to hear, but still hear everything else, like, that whole idea of I can get more of the vocal, I can get more click just by putting other things kind of further behind me or in a wider field, I think is just such a cool thing. And it comes built in. Yeah, and um, if you're using my mod, you'll have the same 360 panner, panner um, on your device uh, for each individual user can have their panners um, right there on their apps. That's cool. And you'll notice this is not just a fit controller attached to the screen, this is actually a new kind of interface in terms of faders and encoders and buttons. Yeah. What I love about it is the simplicity, the yeah. utility. Like, it's very clear where everything is. It's clearly labeled. I like the muted colors. I yeah. think it's it's a very appealing form factor. Yeah. Way less room for error in configuration. And sure. all of that, which is yeah. just gonna be massive. Yeah, I think the the integration between the physical and um, the virtual uh, aspect on the screen is very closely tied together. Um, it makes sense. It's very intuitive. Um, yeah. Man, well, this is going to make a, uh, this going to be a massive deal for churches. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are looking for this. And so I'm pumped that we're some of the first to see it here. Yeah. And I'm also excited that we have content for our MXU subscribers that's gonna be available as soon as the console is released. So yeah. when people get it, they can get training right away. You know, you guys are gonna provide training resources as well. So I'm just I'm just thrilled about our partnership with Waze sure. in helping to bring this to people because I think it's really gonna have a huge impact. Yeah. 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 Thanks for bringing it by, man. Yeah, thank you guys.